Hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, apologize for the very uh, minute amount of uploads over the past couple of years. Uh, we all go through crap in life, and that's about uh, as far into details I'll get into that. Because who uh, wants to listen to a grown man bitch complain about uh, life's problems? I know I personally don't like to. I guess that makes me a hypocrite. So anyhow, my wife and I, we uh, <laughs> like to go out on these uh, rock hunting adventures. Um, I really ought to spend some more time actually recording while we're out gathering these rocks, but we've got a couple locations that we just absolutely love to frequent. Um, I don't keep these spots hidden. Uh, I do give a lot of the information out on where I do collect these specimens. Um, I've given uh, currently rock hounding locations. I've given uh, a number of other YouTubers and Instagrammers um, the exact spot where we collect all these rocks. Uh, now this is not the most amazing specimen and target mineral that you're going to be looking for up in this spot because this spot is loaded with blue agate and a lot of that material is used for the gravel on the road. The thing is, is I know the exact, <laughs> I know the exact location that uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation got this rock and uh, subsequently used it uh, to line the U.S. Forest Service access roads uh, up into this granite quarry, which is full of large boulders. Um, some of them are larger than houses, uh, but the whole mountain is pretty much granite. It's, uh, it looks to be like a diorite or a granite diorite. Uh, some of the larger boulders you can find just humongous, you know, they're softball size or basketball size uh, uh, xenocris of uh, darker colored rock that you could tell were partially melted, but you know, they're included in part of the matrix. Now, what we have here, <laughs> this is an incredibly dense green rock. I, I wish the lighting was a little bit brighter. It's, you know, we live in the Pacific Northwest, so. Um, <laughs> the sun goes down quite early this time of the year. Uh, I wetted it up a little bit so you can still see the green. My iPhone does a pretty good job of relaying those colors. Uh, there's a couple spots here we can notice some rusty patches and uh, these are indeed inclusions of pyrite. So this is, uh, to me it appears to be a hydrothermally altered rock. So this is metamorphic rock. Now, what its mineral composition mainly is, is still somewhat of a mystery to me. Um, I've got a lot of specimens of this type of rock, uh, and some of it is most definitely a variety of serpentine. Um, from this area, I have found uh, tremolite, uh, there's actinolite and ferroactinolite. I believe uh, the tremolite probably has an analog to the ferroactinolite. Uh, so actinolite and tremolite are kind of uh, classified together in the same series and uh, they form in gem quality variations uh, nephrite jade. So nephrite is a form of serpentine, but it's gem quality serpentine uh, that uh, it's typically translucent, you know, I, I, I don't know to what thickness, uh, but either way, what makes serpentine green is the olivine content. You can also have uh, nickel and chromium uh, inclusions within the host rock. Uh, so chromite is the chief ore of um, chromium and I, I find a fair bit of chromite in some of this material uh, some of this other material I believe does contain uh, trace amounts of cobalt I do know that there is copper to be found in 
this material, but I've got other material that it's nowhere near green. It's, I've got stuff that's purple green, um, where the main color is actually purple, and it's got, you know, maybe like 40% of it's green, while the 60% of it's purple. Um, real powdery looking. Uh, and for some reason, I, I'm thinking that that uh, mineral is uh, got cobalt. Uh, here's quite a bit more dusty looking details of it. Uh, but here, you can actually see the serpentinized olivine. Hopefully that comes out alright on the camera. And this white mineral in through here, uh, this is not calcite. At first, I thought this was calcite, because there is actually a fair amount of calcite in the area. Some of it is damn near optical grade. I would say it's it's right on the cusp of being optical grade calcite. Um, I will show those specimens off at some point in the future, but you can actually uh, use some of the pieces and make out uh, double uh, refraction uh, when you hold it up to like newsprint and everything. But you know, even within here, uh, the lighting's not really optimal at this moment, but there's a little bit of purple banding throughout this area. Uh, it could be hematite uh, staining. But this white mineral, I am, I feel more confident that it is a feldspar. Um, due to its opacity, I would say that it's more along the lines of a sodium feldspar. However, some of this material I really believe is magnesia uh, rich. And so um, this area where I gather these rocks is known to have soapstone in the area. There's also rhyolite uh, mountains uh, like uh, Mount Catherine. It's uh, composed pretty much completely of rhyolite. Now the mountain where I've been collecting material, this material and the blue agates that I've been finding are around Bandera Mountain. And Bandera Mountain is mostly granite, or what I believe be like diorite, you know, granodiorite, uh, you know, and that's all pretty much uh, granite. Um, I'm not confident that this is not Gabbro. This very well could be uh, Gabroic. Uh, it could be like a metal Gabbro. Um, but some of it is definitely serpentinized. Um, I do have some other examples where it's clear as day it's serpentinized. There are other samples I have which are completely black, which I believe is about as pure as you can get a ferroactinolate. It's uh, under the microscope, and even without the microscope, you can see that it's fibrous because it's got like a, a tiger's eye effect, which is called catoyance. Um, so anyhow, this rock here, found it today, and I was just fascinated, mainly because of the rusty looking blotches in a couple spots. You know, I've got this really dark patch here. Uh, when I look at it, I believe most of the green coloration is due to the iron. Uh, supporting evidence of that is these really uh, dark brown to reddish brown inclusions of, you know, uh, I guess it would be like hematite stating. Uh, you got some, you know, I don't know if it's ilmenite or, uh, I know some pieces definitely have like limonite and gothite, which are pseudomorphic from pyrite, but this spot right here, I mean, this is definitely, that is definitely serpentinized. Now, it may be a thin layer, um, and then, of course, you know, you've got like this bottom, which is near black, uh, but this white mineral, let's see if we can get back to the white mineral. I believe this could be a magnesite, not magnetite, or manganite, but magnesite, which is a magnesium bearing mineral. Uh, it's often found as uh, white, um, it's highly refractory, and it typically has some iron staining. And 
it's sort of an accessory mineral in the area when it comes to some of the varieties of serpentine, at, at least, if not all. Um, now, I do know there are undersaturated varieties of serpentine, and I would like to create a video eventually, one of these days, of as many varieties of serpentine as I can possibly fit it in, in one video that people will actually watch. Uh, this video is now just over 10 minutes, and so I think I'm going to cut it off here. But, I mean, what a beautiful specimen this rock is. Once it's cleaned up, the green color would just absolutely shine through. It's, it's such a beautiful piece. And I, I've got other varieties, uh, or other specimens of the same material, which are much more spectacular looking than this. But this piece right here, I mean, I was proud of this one today. I mean, this, this thing is heavy. This is, when I compare it to some of the samples of Pareto Tite that I've got, um, I've got some other rocks, which I believe are, they're, they're starting to look like they're getting into the lineage of Kimberlite. Kimberlite is a Pareto uh, type, and some of the zones, uh, which are within a short driving distance from where I live, uh, bring you into blue schist species. Now, when you're finding all these accessory minerals, you know that uh, there's a... Uh, I can't remember all the different varieties of diamond bearing minerals and it's better described as possibly diamond bearing minerals uh, but I actually do have a couple uh, small loose diamonds that I have found while, go, uh, while gold panning. I have confirmed two of them to actually be diamond um, and they're natural. They're not like something that fell out of somebody's ring. Do have a diamond tester and from everything that I can tell it's not like moissanite it's not uh, it's not any other mineral it, it, it really registers as diamond you know we can compare it to my wife's engagement ring and our wedding rings have little diamonds in it and the speed at which it uh, measures it um, it's pretty quick whereas like some other minerals that may throw it off um, they'll test positive as diamond but uh, it takes a little bit longer for the scale to go up to give you the positive result. And so you can kind of roll it out. I believe zircon is actually one of the minerals that can uh, falsely register as a diamond. Um, I was thinking white sapphire, but I am not positive on that. I do know that uh, sapphire and ruby, you know, it's corundum which is made of aluminum oxide that's fused together. And I'm gonna stand up because I'm pretty sure I'm probably causing a blood clot in my leg. Uh, but anyhow, you know, aluminum oxide is highly refractory. Aluminum oxide is one of the most refractory uh, compounds uh, that there are. And so, you know, I don't know. You know, magnesia is, you know, uh, highly refractory um, and many other metallic uh, or transition metal oxides are highly refractory. Um, anyhow, I'm getting way off subject. Now I'm at 13 minutes, 42 seconds. Anyhow, I just wanted to show this rock off because it's just a beautiful specimen and I'm hoping to figure out some way to work on it without totally destroying it because I, I don't have any equipment that is large enough to cut it the way I want so I may turn to a friend who does have a saw <laughs> large enough to do something with this and as uh, gratitude I would definitely let him keep uh, you know, a good chunk of it if not you know at least half of it it's his saw you know this diamond blades are expensive but uh, anyhow since I, I rarely ever update anything um, I just wanted to film this while there was still a little bit of light out. It's not pouring down rain. Uh, so this is one of the first opportunities I've had in months to uh, record with some natural lighting. Um, I have a lot of stuff that I'm going to get out there um, and created. I have a lot of stuff on the backlog that was created many months ago, dating back to last year to earlier this year. Um, 
And so I, I look forward to putting these uh, videos together, posting to YouTube and Instagram. Uh, I've got a lot of really cool stuff on the way, and I'm really excited about it. Um, and ultimately, it gets involved in something much larger than myself. With me, I am just a means at helping get uh, the information out there and hopefully develop interest in order to help uh, conservation efforts, um, which I, I will get into more detail on that. Uh, I don't want to come across as, you know, using uh, work that I'm doing for other people as a means of riding on the backs of others to get ahead. I'm, I'm not for that. So, uh, anyhow, that's it. Um, yeah, it, it's, I would say mainly this is, this is most likely, you know, a green basalt. Uh, it was taken uh, from some of the blast material from the I-90 expansion project. I won't get into everything now because now my video is over 16 minutes, so uh, I think that's just going to be a wrap. And uh, I'll definitely uh, be posting stuff under the microscope and many other specimens that are far more beautiful than this. Some, I believe, are a larger composition of an actual serpentine variety. Um, some of it is translucent, some of it is it's just spectacular looking, but uh, I look forward to posting this stuff and showing off some really detailed um, aspects of these rocks and minerals under the microscope. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing uh, back from others' comments who have uh, taken the time out of their day to watch one of my videos. Uh, anytime you guys do that, leave comments. Uh, it means a lot to me and I, I really appreciate it. So I'm going to conclude it finally after 17 minutes. Thank you so much for watching it until the end. Uh, or at least, you know, fast forwarding enough to get to the end where you hear me, you know, spew out these words. So uh, take care. And uh, thank you again for uh, supporting me by watching the content that I uh, throw out there, even though it's not the best. Thanks.